so this video is going to be about using a multi-output instrument like contact and how you use both the MIDI and route audio. Uh, this comes up a lot and I should have made a video a long time ago about it. Um, I'm going to try to keep this as short as possible. So what you're seeing is contact uh, with several different instruments loaded. This could work for any instrument of this kind like Spectrosonics Omnisphere any instrument that can play multiple sounds at the same time and have multiple outputs. Um, so in this case, I used cello, violin, and a piano, and I already created a track with the violin playing. So um, what I want is to be able to play this cello um, and the piano all from this one instance of contact. What's important to note is that when you add instances to contact and most other instruments like Omnisphere, they're automatically assigned to different MIDI channels. Um, so whether or not you route the audio out of contact or other players to the mixer separately or whether or not you just play them internally has nothing to do with how uh, MIDI data is sent to them. So what I'm going to show you most importantly is how to route MIDI data into each into the instances to each different instrument. All right, so let's begin by talking about Logic's track settings. Uh, when you create a new instrument in, 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 uh, in Logic, the tracks are initially set uh, for channel one. Uh, for all, I'm sorry, set for all, you need to set the first one for channel one, the main instance. In fact, I need to, I might have to redo something here because I did not have to set for multiple outputs. So let's change contact to a multiple output device. Let's just choose eight stereos and eight monos because I'm not going to be using that many. Uh, let's see if it saves what I was using or if it forces me to start from scratch again. All right. All right, it looks like it's loading everything again. Great. All right, so in order to play this violin, it's on channel one. I'm sending MIDI to it via channel one. To play the next instrument with this to cello, I'm going to create a new track with the other menu, next, uh, new with next MIDI channel, new track with next MIDI channel. It'll create a new track playing that next device. But I'm not playing the violin anymore. If you look here, the violin is not being triggered the cello is being triggered. What's important to note though is that all the audio for both devices is currently uh, moving through the same contact instance output. So the main outputs for this contact instance are being used at this moment to send all of that audio to Logic. All right, so I'm gonna record some MIDI and then we'll talk about the audio. Um, uh, all right, let's see if I can record something. anything sorry anyway um uh, finally I'll add another track uh, and this one will be the piano so I'm gonna rename this by the way this is the cello tab and type in piano that's the cello that's the violin and here's the piano I'm just gonna play anything I don't care all right, so uh, let's record something for the piano. All right, so the piano, cello, and violins are all being triggered separately on their separate instruments because they're all on separate MIDI channels. You can see here next to each name, the MIDI channel that's being triggered. Um, but if I want to mix them outside of contact, they're all being sent to the same contact output. So in order to uh, change that, you have to change the outputs within contact. I haven't done this in a while, so forgive me. Um, let's set that up a little bit and open oops, the outputs window. And you can see that the violin is on the first one, but also so is the cello. So we can add outputs and route these appropriately. I haven't done it on this device either. So let's see how it's done on this particular device. Uh, wow, nice. This is 8DO's uh, 
cellos ensemble. Um, uh, it's called uh, Adagio. I've had this for a long time, but they recently, in the past year, updated this instrument, so it's no longer familiar to me. Um, uh, I'm going to skip this one because I don't see how the outputs are controlled. Um, this device is, is, the outputs are here on this piano, so I'm going to send that to the stereo output number two. And, and it has multiple devices, multiple, multiple uh, different signals, so I'm going to send them all. You can see they're going to that second stereo out, but as of yet, this contact instance doesn't have anywhere to send it, so it's still sending it to the main output. So I'm going to go to the mixer and add another couple of, uh, and this is going to be the piano, and I'd be cello in case I have time to route that. This is my mix bus. All right, so this piano I want to send is now going here. That's, so if you look, you'll see, uh, let's see if I can get this uh, cello routed as well. Uh, let's see if I can figure out the cello. Let's see where the outputs are for this device. I should have checked this before I made the video, right? Um, uh, here you go. Uh, let's just send it here for now and see where that ends up going. Still coming out the main output. Even though this says this, let's uh, uh, delete this one. Oh crap. Um, I'm going to delete all of those. So it really wants you to close that, but as you can see, it actually is going to the right place now. So it takes a little editing with contact to send things where you want them, but it is working. So that's the cello. If, you, if I play back this track, you'll see that each one is going to their, to their own channel, uh, their own mixer channel. And they're also on their own MIDI channel. So they're completely independent. The mixer has nothing to do with the audio. I'm sorry, the mixer has nothing to do with the MIDI data. There's two separate things. So, the, so when you're creating auxes on the mixer, that's to carry separate audio. The separate tracks, MIDI tracks, are what carry the MIDI data for that instrument. You can, you will end up with double tracks though if you end up automating the audio for any of these tracks like so. So if I automate the cello's volume, for instance, it will create another, it'll create another track for that in the mixer, um, in the main page, and you'll see that here, and it has no channel. That's the, uh, the automation lane for that cello, um, um, which is separate from the MIDI. I mean, you could do things like create a track stack, I guess, to cover that. Um, um, uh, as they're in the one place anyway, so. Um, but, which holds both the, the automation data and the MIDI data uh, pretty easily. At any rate, so, uh, that's about it. So I hope that helps. If you have questions, I'll be on the Apple Logic Pro X Tech forum on Facebook, ready to help. Have a good day.